Hi, I'm Jennifer O'Toole, and I don't like Minecraft. According to my children, I might be the only person left in America, nay, the world, who doesn't like Minecraft. Now, I don't have a problem with Minecraft. I just don't really like video games. They stress me out. The only one I ever liked was Centipede, and that kind of dates me to the 80s, doesn't it? Child of the 80s here. Anyway, okay, here's the thing. You could have told me when I was a kid that the most fabulous, life-changing lessons, tools were going to be mine if only I would play Donkey Kong. Yeah, I still wouldn't have played it. You see, play is only play if it's fun. And so if you think something is wonderful and you build in all these fantastic, well, extras, bonuses, skills that the player is going to gain from playing, but they don't want to play it, what's the point in the first place? So I've told you all for a long time that, yeah, lots of people, lots of companies have wanted to work with Aspect Kids, have asked for our endorsement, our seal of awesomeness. But as a mom myself, I don't think it's fair to just kind of give it out willy-nilly. I only ever endorse products that I actually think are awesome, that I have in my own house, that I believe in. And I only work with companies who have the same kind of goals that I do, which is they actually want the kids and the families that they serve to become better, happier, and, well, more imaginative for having used their services. That's why for the past couple of years, Ask for Kids and Think Fun Toys have worked together. Why? Because, well, it doesn't shock me at all <laughs> that several of their games and toys are this year up for Toys of the Year. It, it doesn't surprise me at all. In particular, this one, Gravity Maze. You see, I love Think Fun Toys because they actually make you, well, think but have fun. And going back to that whole you gotta have fun if play is supposed to be purposeful, okay, I will admit it. I'm slightly addicted to this game myself. I am. But while I might be 30, <laughs> my youngest child, who's five, okay, fine, with a little guidance, also loves this game. As does my eight year old, as does my 11 and three quarters year old. This game, Really, it just rocks. Okay, on a completely stimmy level, these pieces remind me completely of the light table tiles that my kids play with, that I love to play with. The game pieces themselves are beautiful, besides being functional, which in a house where we are big opponents of STEM, right, so science, technology, engineering, math, a lot of times people call it STEAM because there should be the A in there, arts. And I think it's really important that in engineering this game, Think Fun managed to make it beautiful. I think that's really just incredibly um, ugh, inspirational to kids who see the functionality of things um, without necessarily understanding or appreciating um, or looking for that aesthetic that makes something better than just good, that makes it fantastic. Well, in the Ask for Kids Launchpad, I tell parents, that the single most important place in their house, it's not the, the china cabinet that's holding your grandmother's you know, beautiful crystal. Mm -mm. It's not some treasure of old. It's the game closet. Because the thing is that whether it's learning to persevere when you feel a setback, whether it's learning that mistakes, in fact, are not mistakes, they are waypoints teaching you don't do that, do this. That's flexible thinking in the making. One of the things that I said to ask for kids, there's only one winner, one loser, one right, one wrong, it's all or nothing. But the thing is, we know that's not true in the world, right? Okay, so it's awfully hard to learn to accept advice or not, try out new experiences or not, shift activities, you know, transitions or not, handle frustrations, or not, face disappointment, or not. 
if other people are around watching you and you're having to deal with all that social hoo-ha at the same time. You see, Gravity Maze is one of ThinkFun's solo player games. Now, it doesn't mean you have to play it solo. In fact, a lot of the times in our house, we don't. But it means it's you and the problem that you're trying to solve. It's basically a three-dimensional puzzle where also, haha, physics get to be part of the equation. Okay, I didn't really like physics, except for apparently I do. See, that's the way play is supposed to be. It wasn't about, or it isn't about workbooks and theorems and formulas. It's about learning how to solve a problem, how to come up with an idea, test it out, and then change what has to be changed. I believe that grown-ups call that the scientific method. Think fun? They call it gravity mace. Okay, so how does it actually work? You put your stimmy, beautiful towers into the tray according to the different spots that, no, well, this is a beginner. There are beginner and intermediate, advanced, expert levels. But you put in what it tells you to put in where. Now, that sounds basically kind of simple. You know, follow the diagram. The blue is in the back, and here it is. That's actually a really important visual processing skill. Um, it has a lot to do with um, directionality and knowing your body's place in space. Those are the things that directly, directly affect um, the ability to play sports or the, um, your reading comprehension or um, even handwriting. It can actually be improved by playing a game with cool towers. Okay, so having to figure out where the two-dimensional space is on this plane, translate that into the three-dimensional space here, and then looking each one of these towers, so if you see um, this blue one, you probably can't tell, but it's got two dots on one side, two dots there. This side has no dots. So I've got to take this tower and I've got to look at the top of it and say, mm, okay, wait, which, which side is supposed to have not enough dots? And I will tell you myself that I think every time I haven't been able to solve a puzzle, it's because I had one of the pieces facing the wrong way which is a great, great way to extrapolate. Hey, you know what? Sometimes cotton picking disasters have nothing to do with catastrophes. They have to do with little tiny things that can just be tweaked. See, everything, when you're learning it, it's really about taking it to the next level, right? Okay, well, once you've got your towers that are fixed into the right places, and see how it's nice and sturdy when I put it in there? That's important. Yeah, I just like shook the whole table by just trying to take it out. That tells you something. It also tells you, okay, you need these pieces. You're gonna need green and two oranges. Okay, and you're gonna to have to fit them in somewhere on this board so that when I put a marble into the first, instead of coming out here in my hand going this direction, it's gonna end up here in the red target. Okay, this is obviously problem solving. It's obviously cause and effect, which believe it or not is one of the hardest things for a lot of really bright kids to understand. If I do this, the result is this. Well, in life, the more important thing to understand is, if I want this result, how do I back it up and get there and plan for it? So one of the most important things that I teach the kids is not to think about first, where's this marble gonna come out from this tower? It's how do I make it end up here? How do I get it where I want it to be? And that's the same thing if your goal is getting a driver's license, getting into college, getting through a school dance. It doesn't really matter. If I know that I want the ball to end up, oh, where can it enter? In the right way, well then, I've gotta start it off facing the right way. And, you know what I'm noticing even now? Yeah, I didn't have it facing the right way. So this would not have worked at all. And I suppose that would have been a good lesson. Still a good lesson now. Grown ups, we still have stuff to learn. Okay, so if I know that it's got to end up in here, I have to think backwards. I'm going to do a little shortcut for you because, you know, TV, whatever. <laughs> it's like Julia Child and cooking. All right, so I'm going to want to face this here. Yep, that's right. And like I said, I normally would look and I'd say, okay, I want it to go in there. Well, that means it's going to have to come out and you have to flip it around and twist it around. That is so important because the idea that I have taught my own kids over and over is 
It doesn't mean you're wrong. It just means you have to keep trying. That, after all, is what perseverance is about. That's the main lesson here. You have to keep trying. You have to keep looking to see, well, what you can do differently. And in life, isn't that the whole point? I built it backwards, right? Now I'm gonna run it forwards. I love this game. <laughs> As you get more complicated, you have to put towers on top of towers and twist them and go around and it's awesome. Like I said, it's a puzzle just waiting to be solved. It's translating motion and light and planning. If this happens, then this happens. And here's where I can affect change in the world. Oh yeah, and it comes in a nice little box. All that in a game. That's what play should be. <laughs> That's what Gravity Maze already is. Thanks a lot. Make sure that you visit the Ask for Kids collection, Think Fun, the website I'll be following, because I promise you, this is play that ignites the imagination.